2019 was a banner year for horror, seeing top-notch terror being made at every opportunity. There were spine-tingling remakes of classics like Child's Play and Pet Cemetery, wicked sequels like It 2 and the 10-year follow-up to Zombieland, and singularly horrifying original ideas along the lines of Ari Aster's Midsummer, Jordan Peele's Us, and Robert Eggers' The Lighthouse. Although it's lots of fun to look back and evaluate the frightening films of the past year, we have to make sure we're prepared for the bloodbath yet to ensue. Welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. Today we're counting down the top 5 scary movies coming out in 2020. My name's Keegan Hughes and I'm your newest horrifying host here to guide you through the circles from limbo to treachery. As always, make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more movies from the future. Let's get started. Number 5. Candyman. Disembowelment by hook hand. Mouthfuls of live bees. Baby snatching dog killers. Do any of these phrases freak you out? If so, this is the horror movie for you. Candyman is the long-awaited follow-up to the 1992 cult classic of the same name. The original flick saw a young grad student named Helen researching urban legends for her thesis. While researching, she comes across the legend of the Candyman. A specter with a hook jammed into his bloody stump of an arm who can be summoned by saying his name five times while facing a mirror. As most protagonists in horror movies are, Helen and her best friend are skeptical and decide to investigate further. This investigation sets off a series of brutal events including the kidnapping of a baby, the evisceration of Helen's friend, and the murder of a psychiatrist along with a giant people frying bonfire. The remake has been in the works for a while and by the looks of it, it'll be even scarier than the first. Jordan Peele, the director of hits like Us and Get Out, has taken on a producer role for this. His outstanding track record and love of horror should mean that Candyman exceeds expectations. If true to monkey paw production standards, it could be pretty funny too. If you're worried about remake fatigue setting in, fret not. The remake has already been heartily endorsed by the original Candyman himself, Tony Todd. Todd was quoted as saying the way Jordan Peele explained it to me was that it's going to be applause worthy moments. No matter what happens with that, it's going to put renewed attention attention on the original. Todd has also been listed as cast, so there's a possibility he'll be back to reprise his titular role. Could this mean that there are two murderous mirror spirits in one? I don't know how many hook hands and bee swarms I can handle. And with that, I've realized that I have said the hook handed man's name five times. Are, are there any mirrors in here? Yes? Send help. Number four, The Conjuring 3. The wait is finally over. After seeing in-universe additions like Annabelle Creation, Annabelle Comes Home, The Nun, and The Curse of La Llorona, we're getting a new mainline Conjuring movie. Buckle your seatbelts, grab your Bibles, and prepare for some hide and clap because The Conjuring 3 is coming. The first two Conjuring movies saw paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren square off against some particularly bloodthirsty and blood pukey in some cases spirits. Each had to do with a family in danger of being killed by these ghosts. However, James Wan has revealed that this new Conjuring will have to do with a man on trial for murder. The plot, like in all of the Conjuring universe movies, is actually based on real life case files put together by the Warrens. It takes a look at a murder trial in the 80s where the crime was blamed on a possessed object. The real life trial stirred up a lot of controversy back in the day and the Warrens were at the center of the wild news cycle surrounding it. There's even been speculation that there might be some lycanthropy involved. Star Patrick Warren has dropped hints recently that imply it could be a beast of a film. The Conjuring plus werewolves could turn out to be a monstrous combination. The movie will likely develop some more of the running themes that are common throughout the Conjuring universe. Haunted objects, killer spirits, failed exorcisms, you name it. We will learn more about the young Warrens and they have cast two new actors to play the investigative couple of years past. It makes me wonder, what kind of haunted objects will they come across this time? What possessed antiquity will enter the Warren's collection. Number three, Halloween Kills. As we have learned time and time again, it is impossible to actually kill Michael Myers. Even after being locked in a burning house at the end of the previous movie, he has managed to find a way to live on and terrorize the Strode family. You can stab him in the eye, shoot him multiple times, burn him beyond recognition, lock him up for 30 years, doesn't matter. He'll always come back with a mask and a knife, and he's always ready to kill. Which is probably how they came up with the title for this one. The latest entry into the legendary slasher franchise is sure to get a 
scare out of even the most seasoned horror junkie. The 28 version walked the fine line between nostalgia and new thrills like a seasoned circus performer. I love it when a flick can pay homage to the original but also bring something new to the table. I personally would not complain if Halloween Kills involves more heads being crushed under boots. Just saying. Here's hoping for more incredible music by John Carpenter as well. There's not too much to go on yet, but there was a teaser trailer that made its way online a little while ago. Behind the scenes footage shows us a few crazy moments from set with a bit of terrified screaming in the background. My personal favorite from the teaser is Lori Strode lying in a hospital stretcher up to her elbows in blood. You gotta love it when a slasher turns into a blood splasher. On top of learning a little bit about Halloween Kills, we are also made aware of yet another sequel already in development. Halloween Ends is following up right away in 2021. That means more festive Halloween cheer for years to come. It really is the most wonderful time of the year. I for one am excited to constantly be looking over my shoulder to make sure that Mr. Myers isn't stalking me until then. Number two, The Turning. There is nothing more chilling than a good old fashioned ghost story. I can still recall nights where a young Keegan would stay up way past his bedtime to finish a spooky short story taken from the school library. The uncertainty, the dread, the overall inability to explain exactly what's happening. All elements of a tale that will scare your pants off. All these are present in Henry James's classic ghost story, The Turn of the Screw, which The Turning is based upon. If we're lucky, the same elements that make the written words so lastingly creepy will be translated well onto the big screen. The movie seems to be a modernized version of the novella, with a live-in nanny arriving at an old manor to care for two cute and creepy orphans. From there, she realizes that the building is most definitely haunted, and the children are more than likely possessed. Finn Wolfhard stars as one of the orphans, which means that I can't totally rule out the possibility of a Demogorgon showing up at some point. That would really turn our expectations upside down, huh? Oh boy. <laughs> Jokes aside, there is a lot of possibility for this movie to be really disturbing. The trailer had its fair share of blood curdling moments, including a young girl either vomiting or eating a giant spider, a disembodied hand scuttling around, and a Victorian style ghost floating around an abandoned hallway. All good images that point to the possibility of much, much more. Number one, Antlers. This one has a unique possibility to be something really special. Produced by Guillermo del Toro, directed by Scott Cooper, and based on a short story by Nick Antosca, it is 100% being set up for nightmarish hair raising success. It follows the story of a young teacher who takes pity on a very creative yet Poor student. He tells the story of his life in the form of a fairy tale with some eerie illustrations to accompany it. She takes great interest in helping him, but soon comes to realize a dark, deadly, shape-shifting secret that he's been hiding. If you didn't know, Nick Antosca is a modern horror master. He has written countless creepypasta stories and adapted some of the best into the incredible horror anthology TV series Channel Zero. Channel Zero expands on the fantastically creepy ideas behind these viral scary stories and turns them into beautiful, compelling compelling horror television. If you haven't seen any Channel Zero yet, I'd recommend highly that you do so. It will guaranteed get you hyped up for antlers. I mentioned before that the movie is based on a short story, The Quiet Boy by Nick Antosca. It's actually available for free online on Guernica. If you can't wait for the movie to shock you into submission, take a look at the story right now. Obviously, if you do this, get ready for spoilers, but it's probably just gonna get you super stoked for the flick to come out anyways. If you read the story, you'll know that it doesn't end in a predictable way, which is big. A lot of horror movies can't quite stick the landing, but this one is a slam dunk. Here's hoping the ending stays the same in the movie. If done well, the monsters and antlers have the potential to be some of the scariest in the past few years. Bear people hybrids with antlers and a thirst for blood and pain. A creepy family of monsters living up alone in the mountains. A little boy who wants to protect his monstrous family, but also wants to live a normal life. All these factors add up to a ridiculously scary movie. Well, that's all we have for today's list. I don't claim to be a prophet, but by using my spooky senses and creepy calculations, I tried my best to give you a look at the scariest movies coming your way in 2020. Did you like the list? Are you excited to see any of these movies? Are there any freaky flicks that I missed? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more maddening movie content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. It's just like every time I read something I'm like, I have to think yeah, about it before I take it. Can do. Frittening? Alright. I, I thought I did, but I guess I missed it. There we go. <laughs> you make sure to give this video, I always say video,